Hello and welcome back. Today I want to show you something a little bit different. A bit of planning and a few bulls ups that I'm having to deal with. Generally don't show my bulls up too much. Don't make too many of them. It's a bit, usually a bit of planning stops it. But first one, intercooler pipe. This one's actually all bolted in. Sit on that end, on that end, nice and tight. It came out really nice. Not the bulls up though. The bulls up is the battery tray. Didn't even think about the battery. There's a plastic tray that goes in here to begin with. It's not going to work. Looks like I'm going to have to make my own tray. Just extra work I didn't want to deal with. So it looks like the battery will be going about there. Some nice flat bits. But that's the first balls up. I'll leave the battery sitting in there a little bit. Next was completely forgetting about where to put a catch cam. And then allowing for it around the intercooler. So working that out. We've got a stud off the firewall there and one over there. So I'm thinking I mount it somehow like that in front of the filter. Doesn't look the best. I would have rather put it over in this corner, but don't like that either. So thinking in the corner there, got 90s in dash 8. Don't want to order any more. So that'll go there. Just have to build up some brackets. I'll do that later on. Alright, next balls up we'll go deal with is a bigger one. This intercooler pipe, as you can see, it does not line up at all. When I've welded it, one of my tacks has clearly been off or it's bit moved under a bit of heat. And yeah, I've got about a five degree gap. So I'm hoping I'll be able to cut a slit in this side, force it around, and yeah, then be able to re weld it. Which is a pain in the ass, but got to deal with it. Also got to chuck a nipple on for the boost reference, so I'll do that at the same time. Which is, I guess, just a bit of an added bonus that I've forgot that, but I can fix it up now. Uh, next one, which is just purely due to the size of the turbo and the engine mount placement. I wanted to go 3 inch intake, nice and easy, but I can't even get a silicon on there. Um, looks like I'm going to have to go down to 2.5, and, and then 2.5 and up. And into a free inch somewhere around here just for the filter. I think that's all my balls ups now. Um, should say the turbo's bolted on there properly now, well, manifold's on there properly now. So at least that's one positive. Uh, everything else is kind of still the same. Gotta go through and do up all the fuel lines before I forget about them. So I might do them soon. One thing I really want to do is get rid of these bloody weather shields. Oh, I did not expect that just to come off like that. It's fucked. Absolutely fucked. But there's some in here. Just gotta work out what's what. Turn the camera off for a second just so I can work out what one's what and get them ready and chuck them on. There we are. New versus old. New is beautiful. Still got all the felt. Olds. Disgusting. Proper disgusting. So let's see how we can go with this new one. See if we can get it on there with one hand. Hmm. Maybe not. I dare say the mirror's got to come off to get this on there. Obviously, it didn't have to to come off. But that's a pain in the ass. Go grab a tool, and whip that mirror off, and get the new one on there. See if the other side just pops off as easy as the first side did. Oh, she broke. Cut my hand a little bit. Nah, not as easy. But we'll grab a socket. Assuming just needs to check. Before I go over to the garage, where's my pick? Oh, oh, chucking you guys around like doesn't even matter. Oh, all right. Lucky I did. Screwdriver, she'll be off. Next clip, popping the bastard on. Well, that was meant to be a smooth little clip, me sliding it on, but I forgot to take a little bit of the broken old bracket out. So I'm going to try to get that with a pick so I don't have to pull the rest of this off. 
Wish me luck. Take two. She's out. And all in. So much better. Pop that wing mirror back on. And that's all done. We've actually got to pop the door handle back in. I've got one chilling inside. So I might do that now while I'm doing everything else here. Try and knock out some of these little jobs that I'll put off later on. I've also got the alternator loom in there which I want to pull down. Take that inside. I'm going to get a spare minute to clean it all up as well. Well this bit me for now. This little bloody plastic clip. It's going to go over that. Just a bastard. Can't give enough leverage to get this into a point where I can slide that in to hoop that under. Either that or I'm just too tired for this now. So I'm going to walk away. Just spend a minute tightening up all the fuel lines. Should be good. Not 100% if all the compression fittings are tight. But I feel like they're alright. Got the one intercooler pipe on properly. This one. The other side unfortunately I've got to fix up as she doesn't sit straight. Just a rookie mistake by myself. First time working with these clamps and obviously it's moved when I've tacked it or when I've been welding. But hey, we'll fix that up. As for the rest, it's good. Got to pop the coil packs out as well and put the new stalks on. Knock that out quickly, do that off camera. Fuel pump is in. So just have to attach the lines. Got to chuck the ECU in. Give it some power. Well, give it some ignition. It's already getting power from the battery. Sweet. Speaking of that, bit of a bastard is I don't have the terminals on, and I realise I still got to chuck the alternator loom in. Probably tidy up the alternator loom, but for now it can go in as it is. Just going to go grab it, but I'll do that off camera. I'll bolt that on. One less thing to worry about, and yeah. Hopefully not far off running, just trying to go through in my head what else I've left. Another one I will forget if I don't do right now is the drain for the turbo. So we'll get under there, do that. It shouldn't be too bad, a little bit of pipe, a couple of clamps and one fitting and that's done. The down pipe won't get bolted on just yet. Just like the O2 sensor won't get connected up. And hey, all I want to hear is it start. Like even at the moment the distributor isn't even bolted in there properly but who cares let's get this bloody thing to run so i can get a little bit more motivation to keep going on it hopefully next clip we'll see a bit more action there we have dodgy battery set up in there using one old terminal just because i haven't redone the alternator loom only connected up to the starter the power box whatever the fuse box and just a couple of earths one to the chassis one to the engine one of the coil packs done just to work out the length and she's popping out but onto the inside we've got the bloody test light in front of me center off and jesus christ is it bad in here um connectors that never belong on a car being used spliced into all sorts of things i think i'm going to just power up the hell tech now and tidy up a couple and then come back to the rest also just having a quick look down there at the pedal as i got the ve commodore pedal as you can see the plug there i'm just gonna have to try and work out how i'm gonna make a bracket off that could be a bit of fun hopefully i can make it out of alloy plate easy enough didn't expect it to sit so far under the brake pedal but hey it's all we're in it so just gonna quickly wire up the ignition feed for the Heltec. That way I don't have to run a dummy one, and it can stay there. A little bit of crap I removed, and I just tidied it up, chucked a new wire in there, replaced some of the splice connectors and tidied up a couple of the other little bits. Still got that junk in there, but I'll replace that later on. Um, gotta find the kiddo, I just bought that bastard, there it is. Uh, getting ready to power up the Heltec for the first time this fire out still got no idea how I'm gonna mount this pedal sorry about the view you go along with the ride of the pedal oops hold on a second I'll just check this pedal all right calibrated the accelerator pedal I'm not sure how I'm gonna use it 
ECU is ready to start. So let's see how we go. First crank. <laughs> Bit of trouble finding later. Had the fuel pump back out as the O ring. It's a dicky setup. No hose in the tank, just a little O ring that the pump pushes up into. And because the Walbro didn't quite sit the same as the standard one, it didn't work. But here we are again. Gonna, yep, I should be able to. One foot holding the pedal, one foot by push, the same put, foot pushing the pedal. And we're up. <laughs> No luck. Fault finding again. After nearly a week waiting on parts, I'm back into it again. Just a short clip for you guys, but yeah, been a week or so. The fuel pump, as much as I thought it, the O-ring that was connecting the fuel pump to the actual hanger was a shit system. So I've been waiting on submersible hose. Didn't actually come. Ended up just using transmission line because it was the only thing I had in the right size. So just waiting for the laptop to power up. In the time, I have knocked out a few other jobs. Stripped the rocker cover right down to silver, well, to bare metal. And then welded on a Dash 8 fitting there, Dash 8 fitting there for the catch cam. And then painted it obviously red. All the coil packs bolted in there properly now. They've all got the PRP stalks on them. No point showing you that. All the oil lines connected up for the turbo. The other one I've made up is there's a heater hose. It runs from down there where my fingers are, around to the front here. Connects on to, well it's just a nice braid. With a bit of heat cover over it, connects onto this little bit of pipe which mounted off the top of the gearbox. And that'll run to the back for the heater hose. It'll go and partner with the other one here. Yeah, straight to the firewall. Should look quite good and just simple, it works. As for the intercooler pipe, the bottom one still has to get fixed. Battery, I have made a tray. Simple alloy, just with a couple of tabs onto it. Still got to cut down the stalks and paint the top. But literally just ran out of time, wanted to film this now. And hopefully get the first start up in it properly this time. Mount the catch can in there later on. Honestly, one of the big things that stumped me is this port here i would have said it was going to the brake booster but there is no brake booster and for the life of me i can't find any pipe and i can't remember taking one off i'm gonna to have to look at pictures of how it was before and just photos online see where if we can see where that pipe runs to and other things just got to remove all the shit that's not in there anymore but i'll get myself set up and hopefully the next clip is the car starting up for the first time Well, no luck. Basically, just got to pull the cap off this, work out what its actual trigger pattern is. It's getting full sync, but it's getting some home errors, so I'm not convinced I've got it set up right. And I also don't have a timing light at the moment, so I need to get one, and that way I can actually set the base timing, because I reckon that's that far off, I can't get it to fire up as well. Apart from that, I do have fuel pressure when she primes, which is nice. So we're close. Just a bit of a defeating day. I managed to get to a coffin splutter a little bit by chucking some brake clean in, but it doesn't count. It's just basically firing off the compression, I reckon. So, a bit of a fail. I wanted to have a start in this video, but unfortunately, no luck. Alright, so let's finish this video pulling some shit apart. So, you've got the distributor here, already pulled a little bit off it, the cap and one bolt. And, alright, so it's pretty good we got four equal one the same so single is the home and the four outer is the crank that's what we needed to know and we can check it back in there it's literally all I had to do was to find that out and now I can bolt it all back up at least that way I can get my crank signal right sometimes it can be the stupidest thing that can stop you up so forgot to put new spark plugs in it bloody idiot and it was running rich as hell before so it was never had a chance of starting now we'll get some new plugs tomorrow and try again whoopee but yeah 
it'll be done working on the Mazda for today. Still happy with the other progress I made, but a bit annoyed that I forgot to get new spark plugs it for now. Chuck this one back in, just to block the hole up. That's the PRP stalks anyway. You can see the spring sticks at the bottom of it. Just gonna line that up with the plug. Probably could cut it down, but I'd rather it a little bit longer, let it compress. Well, I'll be stuffed if I let this car beat me. I really want to get a start up in the end of this video, so let's try this again. I've been playing around with the Heltec. I've found a feature called primary fuel density, which was set to zero. It jumped onto my S15 map, it's set to 737.2. Not sure where this number's come from. Not gonna look it up, just gonna go for that same number. Chucked it in there because I was getting zero injector pulse. So I had to work out what in the fuel system was actually causing it. Everything wired correctly, I knew that. But yeah, we'll change that. Let's see how we go. Before where it says injector one time up the top, that was showing a zero. There was no limiting factors in the ECU. So should be good. Chuck this onto diagnostics. You hear more for the noise. If this starts, I'll chuck you onto the front. Alright, fuel pump's priming, let's give this a go. Oh, close. One more. Alright, a little bit of gas this time. Going to take out a little bit of fuel. Gonna have a little bit of a play around and come back in a second with a good little startup. Alright, let's check you up here, see how we go for a start up this time. It's not bad, I'm happy. She's starting, she's running, not great. I mean, the exhaust there, the wide bands there, nothing's connected up, even one intercooler pipe missing. For how it's set up, it's going good. And considering timing, it's just a base. Still haven't even got bolts in there at the moment, but I'm happy to finish the video off like that. She's running, it's, it's got me happy. Something a little bit different I wanted to finish this video off. Gonna do a bit of a giveaway. Celebrate my birthday for the month of October. Gonna give away a billet of oil filter. So this is to suit a M20 by 1.5 thread. So that'd be likes of Z436 or similar. Same as I run on my Sylvia. Nice gift from Raceworks to give away to some lucky bugger. So you can pull this right apart, reusable. So you got this thing here goes in the bottom, locks in there, this bit on the top, a couple of tools, boom, pull apart, pull out the element, give it a clean out, see what the smart's in there, and then put it back together, you've got yourself your oil filter back again, nice easy, uh, bloody top to undo, and yeah, oil filter. All you got to do to win this over the next few videos, I want you guys to tell me your best oil filter stories. I don't care if they're real, I'm not fact checking them. If you have to, make up a story. Best story wins, or the story I like the most wins, or something along those lines. I'll choose one at random, and yeah, I will contact you and give you away this filter.